In this presentation, I'm going to introduce you to the microprocessors. So in this whole presentation, we're going to learn about what basically are the microprocessors. And before discussing the actual architecture of the microprocessor, we are going to understand some of the basics. We're going to grab some basics. So when we're talking about microprocessors, we're going to talk about the Intel family of microprocessors, which is the 8085 slash 8086 and some Pentium or Core 2 processors. We will study about uh, these architectures. So basically, uh, when we talk about a microprocessor, what is a microprocessor? A microprocessor is basically a chip which performs or executes some instructions. So I'm going to write here a microprocessor executes instructions. And since this chip is small, a processor is known as a microprocessor. And you might have heard about processors like the Intel i3 processor or i5 processor and maybe i7 processor. So these are the uh, Intel processors. The company Intel uh, ha is making these processors. And the reason why we're not discussing all of them, and we're going to discuss the early versions. So these are the early versions of microprocessors by Intel. And the reason why we are going to study these microprocessors and not these is because they are the advanced processors and they are they will be able to handle some, some advanced operations so it is difficult to understand the architecture of these processors without understanding the architecture of uh, the early versions of the intel microprocessor so one thing that we uh, that i will do is i will just show the some of the basics of uh, microprocessors how microprocessors are actually working inside your computer system and what actually they are doing so we're going to discuss this and in the next tutorial I will be drawing the architecture of the 8085 architecture so before starting I consider you to like this video and also subscribe my channel to uh, you will be able to get notified whenever I will launch the next video of uh, this whole series all right so let's jump into the topic now so basically uh, the reason why we are studying these early versions is because that they are still used and the concept the architecture is still used in a lot of devices for example if you consider the intel i3 i5 or i7 they are uh, they are able to manage some high operations or i should say high or advanced operations so these processors can perform some advanced operations and let's suppose we have a device and let's say we have a, a remote let's suppose this is a tv remote so a tv remote also performs some operation like changing the channels changing the volume and in that case we do not actually need a very uh, advanced processor you must have never heard any of these processors being used in a TV remote because the TV remote is not going to perform operations like uh, showing you videos or something like that so for that we are still going to use these processors all right so now we know why we're going to study the early versions so let's discuss about the computer system and we will be able to understand what a microprocessor actually does all right so first i'm going to draw a rectangle here and in this one i will just name it as this is uh, let's suppose this is our computer and i will write here computer system So let's suppose this is a computer system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another box here and I will just call this box as a microprocessor. So 
I'm going to represent it as using a micro sign and a P. So let's suppose this is a microprocessor, which is actually a chip. So in a computer, you might have noticed there are some other components as well. So the first component is the main memory. So I'm going to draw here main memory. So I'm going to draw here a box which represents the main memory and main memory is basically RAM. So I'm going to write here that this is the memory or RAM. So RAM is also uh, RAM is the random access memory and we know that uh, you must have seen a RAM in your computer which is of some 4 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes of RAM. And there is another component which is the hard drive or the input output devices. So I'm going to draw here another box and this box basically represents input output devices and input output devices are basically the uh, devices which display something or which actually give some input to the microprocessor. So an example of an input device is a keyboard or a mouse and an example of the output device is the uh, is your computer display or the monitor where it will display all the results all right so a microprocessor is basically used to perform some operations and more specifically they perform some instructions and we will discuss about these instructions in detail in the further coming tutorials so a memory is ram and basically microprocessor uh, or i should say the, that the whole instructions are first loaded in this uh, ram so i'm going what i'm going to do here is i'm going to divide this main memory into some further segments like this so our microprocessor is able to fetch or get instructions from the main memory and it, it can even write some data on these locations so memory has uh, each location in the memory has some address associated with it so the address associated with each and every location in a memory is known as the memory address is known as the memory address and the microprocessor uses this memory address to write some data or to uh, fetch the instructions from this main memory. So the reason why the microprocessor accesses the main memory and not the hard drive. So we know that hard drive is also is also a storage device. And the reason why the microprocessor does not take away instructions from the hard drive is the uh, slower access to the hard drive so whenever you want to access a hard drive it is slower than a particular ram so ram gives you faster access to the microprocessor so let's suppose we have some data or instruction inside this main memory our microprocessor can actually take that data or write some data on this main memory and it does this with the use of some bus lines. So I'm going to introduce another component, which is the bus lines. So actually there are three types of bus lines. One is the address bus. So the first one is the address bus. The second one is the data bus. And the next one is the control bus. So what are buses? They are nothing but they are lines on which our whole uh, data or the address is transferred from the microprocessor to the memory. So I'm going to draw here some lines that will represent. So let's suppose this line represents address bus and this 
will represent the data bus and finally the control bus. Alright, so I'm going to represent them using A, D and C. So address bus is basically used to transfer some addresses from the memory to the processor or from the processor to the memory. So these bus lines are used to transfer the data, the address and the control bus basically says read or write. So I'm going to write here R slash W which means that in the control bus I can actually control which operation should the microprocessor perform on the memory which is the read or write and similarly the microprocessor can also access the input output devices so some input comes from here and the output goes here so this is the input output lines and this is how our computer system actually works so let's suppose you have a program in the hard drive the first thing that uh, you do is you will compile the program so whenever you compile it the whole program has some executable code which is stored in this main memory and the microprocessor will access the memory so the memory has memory addresses associated with it so now we're going to discuss the about the memory because memory is a very this is a very crucial concept because we're going to study about memory addressing also so let's discuss about the memory or the main or the ram all right so if i will uh, draw a structure of a memory here like this so let's suppose this is the memory and i have already explained you that this memory is divided into some locations so let's suppose the location uh, the locations are from some memory address i'm going to assume zero to some memory address let's take some big number so this is basically the uh, this is not the actual address the memory address i'm just taking any random numbers to to explain you the concept of the memory so your memory is divided into some different memory locations and these are addressed using the memory addresses so each location has some memory address now one important concept is known as memory segmentation or memory segments and now i'm going to use a very good example a real life example to explain you this concept so let's suppose you have a book I'm going to write the example here. So let's suppose you have a book. We know that the book has some pages in it and each page has some page number associated with it. And we also know that the books, let's suppose there is a book, it also contains some chapters in it. So let's suppose that book is our memory the pages are actually the locations and each page number is actually the memory address so now the book is divided into chapters and the reason why they're divided into chapters is because each and every chapter has some different concept or has some different purpose so each chapter has some different purpose so let's suppose we have chapter number two now chapter number two, let's say it starts from page number 30 and ends at page number 51. So let's now apply this concept in the memory in the memory. So similarly, memory is also divided into chapters, sorry, into into segments. We call segments in case uh, we are using the example of book, we say chapters but these are actually the segments so I'm going to draw some segments here actually there are four basic segments the first one is the code segment the second one is the stack then data and the extra segment so just like your book is divided into chapters the the memory is divided into segments so 
we have uh, primarily four types of segments one is the code segment i'm going to write here cs stands for code segment we have the data segment we have the stack segment ss and the extra segment and what are these segments we're going to discuss them in detail they all have some different purposes and that's why we have different segments now let's suppose we have a segment let's suppose we have a chapter and it we know that it starts from some page number and ends some page at some page number so let's suppose we take an example of the data segment so let's suppose i will say that the data segment starts from the memory location let's assume 7000 all right so we say that the data segment is starting from the memory address 7000 we are actually taking the arbitrary values these are not the actual values so this data segment will be of some size these all segments are of different sizes and it depends on what microprocessor uh, you're using so basically these segments have some particular sizes so let's suppose the data segment has a size of six uh, some it has some size like let's suppose it has thousand it can have thousand locations so let's suppose in chapter a chapter is also divided into further topics so let's suppose i want to access a topic on and it lies on page number 41 so this is known as offset address offset address so if we take an example of the data segment it starts from the memory location 7000 and it will go like this from 7000 to 7001 then 2 then 3 and then like this so if let's suppose I want to access the memory location or the memory address memory location if I want to access a memory location what I will do is I will just give the address of the data segment which is the starting address so I'm going to write here starting address and I will give some offset address offset address and when I will simply add it I will be able to get a particular location in this memory so let's suppose I want to access the fifth page number of the chapter number two or let's say I want to access the 7000 third position of the data segment I will just add the offset address 3 the offset address will be 3 so this is just basically the concept of the memory segmentation so our memory is divided into these segments so one important thing to note here is that your memory is actually divided into memory locations and not these segments although i'm drawing this that this is the code segment this is the data segment in reality or i should say physically it is not actually divided in these uh, in these segments what uh, the concept is what we do is we just store the starting address of any particular uh, segment I will store it in a register all right so I will store it in a register so let me go up and let me explain you what exactly is a register so a register is basically a combination of some flip-flops it is a combination of flip-flops and if you don't have any idea about flip-flops uh, you can just go to the computer system and architecture playlist and you can actually study what exactly is a flip-flop basically a flip-flop is used to maintain a state of 0 or 1 and when we combine a lot of flip-flops we can obtain a register and so basically a register can hold some data or some address now remember that the data stored in a register or in the main memory is volatile which means that once there is no power supplied to the system the memory will get cleared and the data and addresses of all the registers are also cleared 
all right so now we uh, have registers that are particularly uh, that have the addresses of the the segment so let's suppose i have a i will go here and i will say i have a register cs so the cs register cs is basically a register which will hold or let me just make it more cleaner so let's suppose we have a register and i'm just going to draw a representation of this register and now i will write some memory address in it so let's suppose the starting address of the code segment is 9000 so i'm going to provide the address in this register all right so what your microprocessor does is it will first uh, it has its own set of registers so the microprocessor also has its own registers which we will talk about in the uh, in the whole architecture when we were in the next video we're going to discuss the architecture of 8085 so we're going to use this whole information to draw the architecture so let's suppose you have a code segment register now your mi the microprocessor will access this register first and this register basically specifies the memory address the starting of the code segment so in this manner the whole uh, the whole memory is divided into segments not physically but logically you can see that so now we are going to discuss about another term some important terms so first i'm going to describe you what is a byte a byte consists of 8 bits and one bit can be either 0 or 1 another term is the word and a word is of 16 bits and each bit can be 0 or 1 another is the double word which is of 64 bits and there is also a quad word and it goes on like this all right so then uh, there are some formats to represent the memory addresses so let's suppose we have a binary format binary format means the address is given in the form of the binary numbers 0 and 1 so let's suppose i say there is a there is an 8 bit number so uh, 8 bit binary number so let me just write an 8 bit binary number i'm going to take any random values all right so this is a number you can see there are 8 bits in it so we call this as a 8 bit binary number now there is another format which we are going to use which is also known as the hexadecimal format so hexadecimal basically means hexa means uh, it's basically means 16 so if we are given any binary number and we want to convert it into a hexadecimal number and we're going and the reason why i'm introducing you to the hexadecimal hexadecimal format is because we're going to study all the memory addresses in the hexadecimal format so if you consider all these addresses they're actually given in the form of an hexadecimal format so how can we uh, convert a particular given binary number into a hexadecimal format or vice versa so let's study this very simple concept so first i'm going to write here 2 raised to the power 0 2 raised to the power 1 2 raised to the power 2 and then 2 raised to the power 3 so 0 1 2 3 these are the these represent the uh, 2 is basically the binary number 0 slash 1 all right so if this is a 4 bit number and let's suppose i say i want to display i want to convert this binary number into an hexadecimal number 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into two sections four for each and if uh, there are not four numbers so let's suppose I will take an example like this so first what I will do is I will take four numbers from here and I will append a zero here so we are going to take a combination of four and the reason why we are doing it this is because in the hexadecimal format we represent it in this manner so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a table here so starting from this position first I will mark all of them as zero so this is basically a zero and now I'm going to write the combination 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 so this will represent the number 0 this will represent 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 6 7 then 8 9 and these are basically the decimal numbers which it will represent and the next is 10 we don't write 10 we write a as 10 b as 11 c as 12 then d e f g h and so on it goes on like this all right so uh, since it is a hexadecimal number we are going to uh, just take we are going to consider six decimal numbers so this is basically the decimal format so hexadecimal means 16 so 0 from 15 so you can see this is 0 to 9 then this is 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 like this so first of all what I will do is I will complete this table so 0 then 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 and another 0 1 now in the second row what I will do is I will write 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 and I will do this again and again like this and now here I will just write 0 4 times and then 1 4 times similarly again 0 4 times and 1 4 times and so on and in the last I will represent 0 8 times 6 7 8 and then I will represent 1 8 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 then 8 all right so we are going to mark a line here because we are only considered we are only considering the values from 0 to 15 so I will remove it so 0 to 15 means hexadecimal and you can see that this number is actually the sum of the numbers uh, of 2 raised to the power numbers where uh, the bit is set to 1 so let's consider a, an example let's consider this example 5 so you can see that in its format we have 0 1 0 1 now what you will have to do is you will have to find the corresponding values here which is 2 raised to the power 0 then 2 raised to the power 2 and 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 and 2 raised to the power 0 is 1 now we are going to add them so we will get this value 5 and similarly we are going to do this on and on to find all the values and re and remember that after 9 we are not going to write 10 we are going to write a b c d e f so now if we are given a binary number the first task we are going to do is we are going to divide it into a combination of 4 bits now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make use of this table and I'm going to represent this number so you can see that 1101 is here 1101 
So this is 1101 and let's see this one 0101. So where is it? 0101. Alright, so this is the number. So to display this whole number in the hexadecimal format, what I will just do is I will first write the representation of 0101 as 5 and then 1101 as D. So now we have seen how we can actually convert a binary number into a hexadecimal number. So to represent that this is indeed a hexadecimal number, we write H in front of it. So let's suppose I give you a number, let's say I say F, 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 H. So if you will see anything like this, what you're going to do is you're going to represent F with you can see f is here in this table 1111 so this whole code the hexadecimal code is actually one four times then one f will represent another four ones then another four ones and another four ones now you can see that this is bas basically a 16 bit number so then uh, you can see that if you have four in front of h it means it has 16 bits and if it is 2 it is a 8 bit right so we're going to uh, the reason why i'm explaining you how to convert the binary to hexadecimal because we're going to see the memory addresses in this format in the hexadecimal format so you should know how uh, what this actually means or else it will become more confusing for you so now you can say that the memory location starts from 0 0 h to and I will just append edge in front of them like this so uh, this is basically a format used to store addresses in the hexadecimal format so this is basically uh, an introduction to the microprocessors and I've explained you the concept of segments and we, I've explained you some bus lines and I've also explained you what are offset addresses which is an important concept because we are going to uh, use it a lot of times. So whenever in the further tutorials I will use the word memory I am considering the RAM. So now let's see the main three operations that a microprocessor does. So the basic mm, process cycle of a microprocessor is represented by these three words which is first one is the fetch then the second word is the decode and the last one is the execute so what does this mean what is the meaning of these three words so fetch means fetch means that the microprocessor that the microprocessor is fetching data or some memory addresses from the main memory so fetch means it will fetch instructions or it will get instructions from the main memory and we know that it will fetch the addresses of the data using uh, the address the segment addresses and it will pass the uh, and the, whenever the microprocessor requests for a particular memory location it uh, the data or the address is transferred to the bus line corresponding to it with control bus specifying the read and write operations so first we have fetched the instructions in the first part we have fetched the instruction fetch instruction so let me give you an example of an instruction at this point because we know that instruction is going to perform some operations so let's say there is an instruction which adds two number so let's suppose if I will write abstractly a is equals to b plus c that means that I'm going to store the value of b plus c in a so in the we know that the microprocessor uh, will un will not be able to understand this instruction it is first converted into the assembly programming assembly programming language so in assembly I will write a b sorry I will write add and I will write some register like ax comma bx so what are these so 
as i've already said that the microprocessor has its own set of registers and these registers are basically known as general purpose registers and when we will discuss about the architecture or the microprocessor architecture of 8085 or 86 first I'm going to use the uh, general, I will display what are general purpose registers. So general purpose registers basically are the registers of the microprocessor and it holds some data inside it. So the add is basically the, I specified the operation which is to add the two numbers and these two numbers are stored in these two registers which is the AX and the BX and the registers are known as the general purpose registers. We will see them in detail in the next tutorial. So the microprocessor does not understand this language. What it will have to do is it will have to just decode this. It will in the next step we are concerned about decoding. It will have to decode the instruction in the format which it can understand. So let's suppose this is the AND operation. So each and every operation in an assembly programming has an opcode associated with it. Opcode. Opcode basically means operation code and the operation code is basically in the form of binary number. So it will be a binary number. Let's say 101011 is the opcode of some instruction like move instruction. So there are a lot of instructions, the add instruction, the move instruction. We are going to discuss all of them in detail. Here I'm just going to abstractly uh, show you what exactly is decoding. So first the microprocessor will fetch the instruction in this format and then it will have to find out the opcode by decoding it. And finally when it has found all the things, it will execute the instruction. So this is the three words which we will use in the architecture and in the architecture I will just I'm just going I will just draw a diagram representing all of this information I will display the memory the segment registers and how the addresses are fetched we are going to discuss it in the microprocessor architecture in the next tutorial so thanks for watching make sure to subscribe our channel